This is a patient with thyroid swelling and today we are going to see how to examine a case of thyroid gland swelling. With the presence of female attendant in case of female patient, first introduce yourself to the patient. Tell her what you are going to do and assure her that it would not cause any problem to her and if she feels any problem she can immediately inform the examiner. Then the patient is properly exposed. Ideally, for thyroid gland examination, neck and upper part of the chest should be exposed. After exposure and proper positioning, examination of the thyroid gland starts with inspection of the thyroid gland. With headlight focused on the thyroid gland swelling, patient is asked to swallow and the thyroid gland is inspected from front and from the side. During inspection, you should notice site, size, shape, and surface and margin of the swelling. Overlying skin condition should be noticed if there is any obvious pulsation or any scar of previous neck surgery. It is also observed that if the lower limit of the thyroid gland is visible or not. During palpation, we should see temperature of the swelling. If there is any tenderness, tracheal positioning is seen if it is pushed to any side. Enlarged lobe or gland is measured with appropriate measuring tape which is not used here. Now get below the swelling test is being done to see if it is possible to get below the swelling to confirm that there is no retroesternal extension of the thyroid gland enlargement. Now the gland will be examined from back. The patient is asked to swallow and the surface of the gland margin consistency any skin fixity mobility of the gland is seen from side to side and from up to down relation of the swelling with the sternocleidomastoid muscle is seen now we have to palpate for carotid pulsation. Carotid pulsation is felt at the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid at the level of upper border of the thyroid cartilage. If carotid pulse is not palpable then it is called that very sign is positive. Now it's time to taste for tracheal compression or Cocker's taste. The swelling is pressed slightly on either side of the trachea and the examiner will try to hear that if the patient is having any kind of a strider. As I am behind the patient, I can use Napjiger method for demonstration of exothermos. Now the neck is palpated for presence of any lymph node. Submental, submandibular, anterior cervical chain lymph nodes, posterior cervical chain lymph nodes, preauricular, postauricular lymph nodes, and occipital lymph nodes all are palpated. The supraclavicular group lymph nodes and level 6 lymph nodes are also palpated. Now 
we can examine for some toxic signs. These include examining the pulse rate, rhythm and volume, The palmar surface of the hand is palpated for any sign of increased sweating. You can examine if there is any tremor of the hands by asking the patient to stretch her hands. This can be helped by keeping a paper over the stressed hand. Now I shall demonstrate different toxic eye signs. When I was behind the patient, I used the Napjiggers method for demonstrating exophthalmos. Now I shall demonstrate some other eye signs. By just observing the eye, we can see if there is any white palpebral fissure, chemosis, periorbital swelling, proptosis, and infrequent blinking. Infrequent blinking is called stale work sign. When the patient is in down gaze, then white palpable fissure causing dead lag is called Darlimple sign. Then ask the patient to look up and down following your finger moving in front of the eye up and down quickly for 5 to 6 times. If eyelid fails to follow the movement of the eyeball, then the upper sclera will be visible. This is known as von Graefe's sign. Steading the patient's head with one hand, the patient is asked to look up at the ceiling. If there is loss of wrinkling of the forehead, Geoffroy sign is positive. Now patient is asked to look at a distant object and then asked to look at a finger of the examiner brought suddenly in front of the eye from the side. If there is failure of convergence of the eye, then Mobius sign is positive. Then indirect laryngoscopic examination is done to see movement of the vocal cord. It is done after explaining the procedure to the patient and showing the safety of the procedure. And we can also examine the ankle jerks and look for pretibial myxodema. In the end, the patient is greeted and thanked for her cooperation. If we have uh, removed the clothing for exposure, then it is properly repositioned. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.